Of all the stories I've written about in my Haunted Liverpool books, I'd say the most popular one is the tale about Spring-Heeled Jack. When I was a little kid, I used to sit and listen to my grandmother's stories about the old days of Liverpool. And one day we were sitting in front of the fire when she happened to mention a very strange story about a real-life bogeyman who'd been seen by scores of people, not only in Liverpool, but in London and many other cities and towns as well. And this bogeyman was known as Spring-Heeled Jack. My friend's mother, Elizabeth Slemon, actually saw Spring-Heeled Jack in the 1880s when she was just a little girl. Elizabeth had been attending Sunday school one evening in October and had glanced out the window to see a shadowy figure running along a road in Everton near St Francis Xavier's Church. Now, this silhouetted figure jumped into the air and he seemed to fly upwards. The teacher of the class also saw him and later that night several other people saw the figure of a man come down off a roof and land on the pavement without suffering uh, any apparent harm. The same mysterious figure was seen falling from the steeple of St Francis Saviour in December of that year and he landed with a thump in the snow but he didn't appear to be armed after falling about a hundred feet from the church spire. Now my gran said that a Mrs Hughes who lived in one of the poorly lit courts off Scotland Road saw spring Jack watching her one evening as she went out to get water from a pump in the middle of the court. She described them as wearing a cloak, a tight-fitting costume and the helmet of some sort. She said his eyes were glowing like balls of fire and he had halos of colour around his head and body. And Jack stretched out his arms sideways and a light appeared on his chest and then Mrs Hughes felt as if she'd been struck by lightning as something hit her and left her partially blinded and semi-conscious. The woman's sons thought their mother had suffered a fit when they found her, but an old man who had also witnessed the unearthly incident said he had seen spring Jack take off like a bird after the cowardly attack on Mrs Hughes. Now several other people in the area visited Rose Hill Police Station and reported seeing a sinister shadowy man in black who had been making phenomenal leaps into the air on Scotland Road after dark. Now, the police didn't take any notice of these reports at first, but there later came apocryphal stories of spring Jack attacking police officers across the city, from Great Omer Street to the Wavertree High Street, where the jumping man spat some sort of luminous gas into the faces of the lawmen, making a mockery of them in front of terrified citizens. Some of the older people in Liverpool recalled that this spring Jack had first been reported down in London in 1837. That year he made headlines after scaring night travellers in the Barnes area of the capital. Then one night in 1837 it looked as if Jumping Jack had finally been caught. It started with the frantic hammering on the front door of the Alsop family home in the district of Bow. A young teenager named Jane Alsop answered the door and she saw a policeman standing in the fog and shadows. Bring a light! We've caught spring Jack down the lane here, the policeman said. Now Jane had read all about spring Jack in the newspapers and she said, Yes, sir. And she rushed back into the house to grab a candle she'd been reading a book by. She reached out, offering the candle to the policeman. And by the light of that candle she saw to her horror that it was spring Jack wearing a policeman's helmet, uniform and cloak. Jack had robbed the uniform from a policeman he had ambushed the night before. Now Jane Alsop's legs felt like jelly and she turned and she ran screaming back into the house and she and their two sisters managed to slam the door in the face of spring Jack and then they heard him claw the door and he laughed hysterically before vanishing into the mists of the night. Who was spring Jack? Many theories have been put forward over the years and I have researched the case for some time now and if you want to know more about the Leaping Terror you can read all about his further antics 
in my haunted Liverpool books. I wonder if Jack will ever return. <laughs>